Python trainer Ruven Lerner here with another question from Brett, who recently read my book, Python Workout from Manning, with 50 exercises to improve your Python fluency. He's also a subscriber to my free weekly Better Developers newsletter. Okay, enough shameless self-promotion. On to Brett's question. He asks, what is the Dunder init method? What does it do? How do we use it? Why do we have to define it? Do we have to define it? So I'm now going to define the simplest possible class in Python. I'm going to say here, class, my class, colon, pass. What have I done? I've created a new data structure in Python. I've created a new data type in Python called my class. And I can actually create instances of my class. So I can say 01 equals my class. And I can say 02 equals my class. And each of these is a perfectly legitimate new object of type my class. So I can say what's the type of 01, what's the type of 02. And we see that each of them is main my class, main my class. The Dunder main here indicates the namespace in which I defined it because I defined it in the global namespace as opposed to in a module, so it's in Dunder main. That's secondary for now. Okay, but the whole point of creating a new data type in Python is that it'll have some special features, maybe some data. That's the whole point, right? Like if I just create a class that's empty, what have I really done? Not very much. So in other languages, in like a statically compiled language, I would have to declare ahead of time, every object of type my class will have the following fields. But that doesn't actually exist in Python. In Python, anyone at any time can add any attribute to whatever object they want. And remember that attributes are accessed differently from dictionaries, but they are conceptually like a private dictionary for an object. So I can say 01.x equals 10 and 01.y equals 10, 20, 30. And sure enough, I was able to add the attribute x to 01 and add the attribute a y to 01. And if I say, what's the vars of 01? Vars is this fantastic function that returns a dictionary of the attributes to find an object. We see that sure enough, x is 10, y is 10, 20, 30. Now, if I were in a language like C++ or Java or C Sharp, I couldn't do this just to 01. It would mean that once I added uh, certain fields to 01, I would have effectively added them to all instances of my class. But no, that's not the case here. Vars of 02 is sadly empty. And of course, I can add 02, A equals, let's do a set here, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 02 of B equals a dictionary, A1, B2, C3. And now the vars of O2 has different types and different names and different attributes. Chaos ensues, or as we call in the consulting world, a business opportunity. In any event, this is clearly not the optimal way to go, right? On the one hand, I want to keep my class uh, pretty simple. On the other hand, this is such a simple class definition, such a nothing class definition, that by necessity, if I want to start using my class, what I have to start doing is assigning attributes to it after I've created the object. I, there's no limit to what I can add. And even though there's normally no limit, I want to at least encourage people to be a little more disciplined. So the solution is the Dunder init method. The Dunder init method runs automatically when you create a new instance of a class and it runs when you create the new instance, but before that new instance is returned. And the job of the Dunder init method is to add attributes to the new object. So I can rewrite this. I can say def or class my class. And I say def Dunder init self x and y. Let's do that. And I can say self x equals x and self y equals y. I can even say here print now running init. We'll even say here my class dot in it with we'll say x equals and y equals this is python 3.8 syntax it's fantastic wow i really got addicted to this and now if i say 01 equals my class of 10 and 20 look at that we see that we're running my class in it with x is 10 and y is 20 and if i say what are the vars of 01 it's going to say oh x is 10 and y is 20. i should add by the way that the x and y here are local variables in the function Whereas the x and y here on the left, self.x and self.y are not variables at all. They are attributes. They are part of this private dictionary that is owned by our object. And that's how we see them here in vars, that we're asking to see all the vars exposed to the dictionary. And now if I say O2 equals my class, and I can of course say here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and A1, B2. Right, well now it says I'm running my class in it. It is initializing our object with whatever we've provided to it. Now, if I want to ensure that only certain types are going to be passed, I'll have to use all sorts of type checking. That's secondary to what we're talking about now. But now if I say vars of O2, at least the names are consistent. 
So to summarize, the dunder init method is not mandatory. You can definitely create a class without dunder in it, and there are reasons why you might want to do that. But as a general, general rule, the dunder init method is there so that you can initialize attributes on the instance so that you'll know that those attributes are there. Um, later on, when you run other methods, you can set them to have regular values, default values, and grab them from the network, whatever you want to do, but they will be there. I would argue that even if you're going to be setting, changing those attributes later on, you want to set them up in Dunder init so that anyone who's going to come and try to read your code and maintain your code will have a, a, like a central directory, a central naming, name list of all of the attributes you're going to want to use later on. So you don't need it, but you want it. You want it so that it's obvious and easy to read. You want it so that you can initialize these things. Um, and if you don't have a dunder in it, then the dunder in it of the parent class, in this case, the case object will run. An object actually does nothing. It doesn't actually add any attributes, which is what we would sort of expect for a default. Um, sometimes people want to do much more in dunder in it. They want to start setting up all sorts of other things. My argument is that dunder init is really for setting up the object state. That is to say, it's attributes. You can perhaps do other things, but I would I would suggest that you do it in another method, even maybe a method that you call from dunder init. All right, and remember that dunder init is called automatically. You will typically not call it yourself explicitly, unless 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 you're trying to do that from within inheritance. Again, a topic for another time, but I promise you that I'll cover it at some point. All right, Brett, thanks again for yet another fantastic question. If you have questions about Python. Contact me on Twitter, contact me via email, or you can always subscribe to my Better Developers mailing list, received, uh, as far as I know right now, by about 19,000 people a week all around the world. I hope you'll join me and all of them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be back soon with more Python questions and answers.